Welcome back to Bomb Reviews. Today I'm gonna unbag a 1930s slot machine. Still works, it's a great machine. I can't wait to show it to you. BOMB stands for bags of mystery Each episode, I unbag a fascinating old machine or item. In today's case, some would say an addicting one. All right, let's go ahead and unbag it. I don't have a bag that fits over this, so I just draped it on here. Here we go. All right. So this is a 1930s Mills Novelty Company 25 cent slot machine. It's all mechanical. It's a really cool, intricate machine. I'm gonna show you how it works. I'm also going to answer the question that most people have, can you rig it? So the big question people have for me is, where did I get this? Well, my dad bought it back in the 1970s. And later on, it was in a basement fire. And at the end of that fire, it was a charred mess. So I decided to restore it. I sandblasted it, repainted it, got some parts re-chromed, uh, cleaned the inside so that it all worked. And uh, yes, that's me 30 years ago restoring it. So just a few features to point out, and then I'm going to open it up and show you how it works. This is called the Mills Bursting Cherry. It's got the big cherry and the burst in the front with cherries down here. I know a collector who knew the right color scheme. This is the correct one, kind of a Spanish orange color, and it's got this brown wrinkle paint. The jackpot is shown in the front. Back in the 30s, a quarter was worth about $4.75. So even though this machine doesn't pay out as much as the modern ones, when it did pay out, it was considered a lot of money. The jackpot alone holds about 100 quarters. That's like winning 500 bucks. So let's give it a pull. This quarter goes in here, drops down into here, pull the lever, gradually stops. Oh, we just missed winning. If you look, three plums would have been 14 quarters, but we just missed. Let's turn it around and let me take the back off. There is a key. Uh, I do have it unlocked. And then this top part comes off as well. Let's take that off just so we can get more light in the mechanism. So there it is. I'm going to cover four major components. The coin escalator, the reels themselves with, with these discs that have holes in them, these payout fingers and down here are slides that correspond. Uh, there's also a pneumatic lever for when you pull the handle, slows the handle down. There's a coin box that holds excess quarters as the, as the machine fills up. And um, there's also a counterfeit coin box. The, counter, the counterfeit coin box collects things that are not actual quarters. So when you drop it in, it goes through, here's a magnet that detects if it has any kind of iron in it, it will pull it and drop it. It won't go into this mechanism. It, same thing if it's too small. So let's look and see if we've collected anything in here. Sounds like we have. So a couple quarters. The, there are some extra quarters because if you put in too many quarters at a time, it will actually drop into this box. There's also a dime, nickel, and penny. Those, of course, wouldn't work. There's a piece of paper. I don't know if we can see what it says. It says, it says, help me. So I've colored this quarter in red so you can watch it travel through the front as it goes. So we go once, and there it is, right in the first position. So if we put another one in, you'll see it just keeps traveling along. 
eventually dropping down into the copper tube. As I pull the handle, a rod pokes forward, and if it meets resistance, the handle is allowed to continue, and the whole mechanism is launched. At the end of the escalator, the quarter drops down a chute. Here's the long brass coin chute that fills up for paying out. When this chute is full, coins spill over into one of the jackpot reservoirs, either the one showing in front or the backup one behind. When all of those are full, the coins spill over and down into this removable cash box. When you pull the handle, that's what sends the reels spinning. At the same time, it winds up a mainspring, also called a clock. And that unwinding clock is used to regulate the speed at which the reels are stopped, starting from the left one at a time. You can adapt the speed by folding these wings in to go faster or out to go slower. The pneumatic rod helps slow down the handle's return for two reasons. One is to not make a clunk, and the second is to give the cycle time to complete before the handle is pulled again. The position of the stopped reels determines whether you win a payout or not. The winning combinations and payout amounts are shown on this front metal plate. Notice none of them begin with a lemon. If your first reel stops on a lemon, you know it's a losing spin. As each reel stops, long metal fingers are pushed into the reels. The bottom part of those fingers are hooked up to springs that move stacked brass slides which have openings the size of quarters. Depending on the ending position of the finger and slides, they'll either block or allow coins to be released from the copper payout chute and the quarters drop out into the payout slide on the outside of the machine. It's a complicated formula. The number of fingers pushing through the holes in the reels and their position determine what gets paid. These match the symbols on the reels and the position of the slides. All right, so the big question, can you rig it? It can't be rigged like while somebody's playing it. You can't control how it pays out. Um, you know, today's machines are all electronic. They're all computer programs. Those are rigged. I mean, they pay out precise amounts. Um, this, so this is all mechanical, really can't be, but you can make it a tighter or a looser machine, as I pointed out before. So again, here are the holes, and they correspond, each reel corresponds to one of those discs. They look like saw blades, but that's really just so this thing can stop them. Um, but they all have different holes, and these are the these are the arms that either go through or don't go through. Um, so the way to make it a tighter machine is basically to block these holes with a, you know, some kind of metal slug. And, uh, and if you do that, you have to then change the reel strips on here because they would no longer correspond to a winning thing. So let's, whatever this one corresponds to, you'd put a slug over this in, and the corresponding symbol would turn into say a lemon because when a lemon shows up as the first symbol, it's never a winning combination. So this machine, this particular machine has nothing blocked, so it's as loose as it can get, which by today's standards is not very loose at all. You could go a long time playing this and not win a thing, which can get really discouraging. That's why we leave free quarters out for people to use, because um, we don't want to take all their money. So that's it. The quarter slot machine is the favorite thing I've ever restored and got working. Join us next time. I'll show you an antique check writer that still prevents fraud and forgery as well as it did when it was made back in the early 1900s.